Don't whine. Go find them. Go find them. Go find them. They're over here. Go find them. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Oh my god, he's letting me touch him. He has not let me. He's letting me pet him, guys. The whole time he's in the stall, he wouldn't let me hardly touch him. But he's busy trying to eat my shoelaces, too. All goods have an obsession with shoelaces. Don't try your luck, lady. Hi, guys, and welcome back to Mulberry Ranch Farm. It's Ashley here with you again today. And today we're somewhere different. We're down in the buck pen. So why are we down in the buck pen besides the fact that it's gorgeous outside, the sun is shining, and I do like to spend some quality time with my guys. And, you know, getting a head start on this year's farmer's tan isn't a bad thing either. Well, the real reason that we're down here is we have Flu and Champ that have been inside in a stall for the last two weeks while Flu's been getting accommodated um, and settling in into our herd. So the reason we had Champ in there too is Champ is a buck that's not going to be staying with us so I figured while he's waiting on his time to be sold or to go to a new home where he's going to um, be a breeding buck, might as well have him be a friend to Flu so that when we brought Flu down here, he could come back in with a buddy because goats are herd animals. They don't like to be by themselves. It can stress them out to the point where their immune system drops, they start to pick up parasites and things of that nature. So. We decided Champ can stay in there, and Champ was definitely starting to show that he knew exactly what his job was going to be in the near future. He's showing the same vigor as his papa back here. So we decided it was time to go ahead and completely wean him, get him off and away from his mother and all of our other does that he's pretty much related to, and bring him down here with flu. So today we're just going to go over what do we need to do when we're integrating a new goat into an already existing and bonded herd. So stick around with me guys, we're gonna go over that. But first, we gotta go get Flu and Champ. So first and foremost, whenever you bring in a new goat to your property, it's probably a really good idea to quarantine them for two weeks. Now, albeit, you not have quarantined completely because he did go in with one of our bucks that we're selling. We are a clean tested herd. He came from a clean tested herd. Um, Champ needed to be pulled off of his mom and away from all of the younger does anyways because of him showing the willingness to do what nature intended for him to do. So. You should be quarantining for two weeks. Now, the reason for that being is maybe you don't have a closed herd. Maybe you don't do the biosecurity testing and you don't know what your goats have. Maybe you, the goat that you're buying, you don't know if they've been blood tested for CLCAE or Yonis either. So it's always a good practice, especially after fairs or showing. It doesn't just go for when you're buying a new goat, guys. Go ahead and quarantine them for two weeks. That should give you enough time to see if that goat's going to be stressing um, they're going to be stressing anyways from coming to a new place, but sometimes that stress will show you what illnesses or ailments that that goat might have. It also gives you a chance to bond with the goat, get them used to their surroundings before you turn them in with other goats. Um, but really it is for the safety and the health of your existing herd. Now if these are your first goats, you don't have to do that. Um, but that's for another video on what you need to expect when you get your first goats and what you'll need. So. You guys can see behind me, they're exploring the perimeter. So when I introduce them after the quarantine period, I make sure that I'm out here with them. And the reason I make sure that I'm out here with them, this is a new environment. They're going to be testing all of the fences. So it's also a really good time for me to see maybe where the fence weaknesses are, especially for young goats, because they can get through spots that these guys back here, they can't fit through anymore. So in that way, it's really good. But I also want to be with them in case they do get stuck in a perimeter. Maybe they get a foot caught, maybe they get their head stuck. And when a goat starts to struggle, that's when they start to damage themselves or cause injury to themselves. So I make sure that they're here while they're looking through 
or I'm with them while they're here looking um, through the whole perimeter and testing all the fences. Now, because there are mature bucks in here, I'm also staying in because I need to see how they're going to interact with these mature bucks and I need to see how the mature bucks are going to react to them. So if, and it kind of goes back to the fact that goats are herd animals. In a herd, there is a hierarchy, which that means there's a chain of dominance. So you have your, your very dominant goat for our lovely doe herd over here. It's definitely Dilly and Mossy. Those are my herd queens. They're at the very top of the hierarchy. They hold the most dominance and they show the other goats that they're the dominant goats, especially new ones. Um, so with them wanting to show dominance, I need to be here just in case it gets a little out of hand. They get them pinned or I can also maybe see if I can't put them in right away. I can't walk away or I can't have them in unsupervised. It might need to be a I put a pen, a makeshift pen close to theirs that maybe shares um, some fencing or a fence line so that they can get accommodated to each other through the fence and that way they can do all of their asserting through the fence. They're not going to hurt one another and um, it'll just be safer for them all around. So the next thing that you might need to focus on when you're introducing a new goat to your herd, make sure they know where the water source is. It's starting to get warm. It's not too warm so we're very lucky in that way that we're not introducing a goat in very warm weather. If it were very warm, um, water would be a big concern because especially if they're running after other goats, other goats are running after them, they get hot, stressed out, they need to know where a water source is. So I also walk around with them in here till they figure out this is the food bowl, this is the water, this is minerals. Um, just those things so that it makes it a little less stressful for them. And since we've been talking about dominance, for all you new goat owners out there, or maybe this is your first time that you're introducing a goat to your herd, that dominance is going to be shown through head butting. They'll come up their, um, the back, their hair on their back will probably stand up. There'll be a lot of posturing, a lot of stocky and posty legs and presenting the side to make them look a lot bigger. But it really does sometimes come down to physical contact. Don't be afraid of that, but monitor it because it can get out of hand, especially with these little guys and the big guys, because the big guys don't really think about they're three or four times bigger than the little guys. They're just trying to show them, hey, I'm in charge and you're not. So while that's normal, don't be alarmed. Just keep an eye on it. Another thing that you might need to introduce your, introduce your new goat to, um, especially if it's in with a herd, is they need to know where the shelter's at. So. I usually take mine into the shelter. This might be the place where I walk them in and physically set them down so they start in the shelter and they know where it's at. Most goats are very, very curious and will check out everything in their surroundings. They'll nibble, what they're, they will nibble, they'll taste, they'll sniff, they'll lick. But that is one place sometimes when they're stressed or if you have other goats that are establishing a dominance, they might not wanna go in here. This might be one of those, um, one of those areas that goats will take a stand on and say, this is my area. So you may need to monitor that when you're introducing them for the first time, especially at nighttime, if there's gonna be bad weather or drafts, it might be a good idea to maybe just go and pull them in, crate them, put them in an empty stall if possible. So these boys are acting out number one because they're bucks and those are does. Yes, before anybody scolds me in the comments, shouldn't have a fence line that shares between bucks and does. We haven't had a through the fence breeding happen yet, but you guys can see we've got fence posts that are gonna be going in from right here all the way back. So we'll have a huge area where they won't, but you guys can see here, they're acting like little bozos because there's a girl, but you might find that they'll butt through the fence, which Tootsie is a younger goat, so she's pretty low on the totem pole. I wouldn't be surprised to see if, if she does that. And that's posturing right there. The ears forward and rearing back a little bit. See the ears flinging back like that? She's right through the fence like we were just talking about, guys. It's not uncommon. It's a little bit safer for them to do it this way. But if that fence were there, they'd be hammering away on each other. So if you do have goats that maybe aren't taking the introduction so well, this might be a really good way. It's just run them along the fence lines for a while or let them share a fence line and get used to one another before you actually let them in 
with each other. So you guys might notice with your established herd that they're not just a reasserting dominance with newcomers. You might see that they also start to reassert dominance within the herd. And it's because with the presence of a new animal, of a new herd member, it's like everybody's position in the hierarchy gets jumbled and they have to reassert like, I'm still higher on the hierarchy than you. I still have more dominance in the herd than you. I still eat first, not you. So just, <laughs> it can be a little chaotic when you introduce a new animal into your herd, but it's normal. They do work it out themselves, guys. They will eventually work it out, but it can be a little unhinging if you're not used to it. in your language. Translate, please. Oh. <laughs> That's not the translation. <laughs> so these are just a few things in my experience with introducing new members to my herd that I've really found will help. But I will say the number one thing that you can do is when you bring them out, you're out here to observe. Um, a lot of things can be stopped. A lot of goats can be saved injury or death. If you're out here watching, and observing and making sure that everything's going just as it should that your goat isn't exhibiting too high signs of stress because stress is a killer in goats they can get stressed one other thing that i will share with you i know a lot of new goat owners especially if your goat isn't friendly or maybe doesn't come up to you or is a little hard to catch they want to leave collars on new goats in new areas with new herds collars are a huge no-no and as much as I leave some collars on my milking does, they're slip collars, they can slip right out of them if they get caught. But a stressed goat that is in a new environment with other goats that might not be acting the nicest or unaggressive towards them, once they're caught on a collar to something, unless it's a breakaway collar or a slip collar, do not put collars on your goats and just turn them loose. Um, it's a good way for them to get caught, to strangle themselves to death, to hurt themselves. So I'm going to caution against that. Um, we've never had a goat hurt because it had a collar on because we've never introduced goats to the herd that are new or into new areas with collars on. Um, feed goes a long way to catch a goat. There are shepherd's hook. I've seen some from Premier One where it's a leg catcher where it is a shepherd's hook that has kind of like a hinge that swings up behind that you catch them by the leg. Or if you've got someone out to help you, you can herd goats, they're herd animals, herd them into a corner and, and get your hands on them. Don't put a collar on them. Don't just throw them out here. Um, I might seem a little passionate about that, but it's because I would hate for anybody to get a new animal and introduce it to their existing herd to only come out and find it hung up and dead somewhere. Um, that's not good for the animal, obviously, but also, I mean, that's pretty, it's pretty dramatic for you. It's pretty dramatic for your herd. Or your children or anything else that may already be um, attached to this goat because if you've gone through the steps you've already been quarantining them for two weeks you've already been bonding with them for two weeks for them to just be introduced in through carelessness or maybe just no forethought or experience left to left to their own devices so in review guys we need to make sure we quarantine the new goat for two weeks just so that we can get a head start on making sure that they're healthy and safe to be put in, put in with your herd, that they're going in in the tip top health with less stress. We need to make sure that they know where food and water is, where shelter is. Um, we need to be able to watch them walk the perimeters of the fence and test fence to make sure they can't get out or that they're not going to get in trouble while testing the fence if they get tangled. You also need to be out here to observe them with your herd establishing dominance and creating a new pecking order because they're herd animals. They're going to do it. So don't panic, stay out here, observe. That's the biggest preventative for all disaster when you're introducing new goats to your herd. Be out there, watch and observe. And come on guys, goats are awesome. They're so much fun to watch. Um, they all have their own personalities and I, I like being out here when I introduce new goats just because you can see their social structure and it's, it's really something awesome so
guys i think that's going to do it for us today i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you learned something if you did find yourself enjoying this video go ahead hit the like button drop a comment or subscribe and don't forget to ring the notification bell while we are on facebook and instagram and give our viewers a heads up that we're going to be posting on youtube if you ring the notification bell you're going to get um, a reminder that we've posted something new and you don't want to miss out on our adventures guys so i think that's going to do it for us today guys thanks and until next time bye mm -hmm.